thank you we for joining us. Appreciate you so joining us this early. Oh, well, it's my pleasure and top of the morning to you guys. So I know I know suddenly the sunshine came in when I took that off. It started <laughs> real bright and whatnot in here. But uh how the men doing? We're doing We're great. Good, good. I how wanna, did I um, wanna how, how did Giving Tuesday go for you? Well, that's where I was going with this. I wanted to thank everybody that was part of that. And we had people that I had not heard of in years that, that had given, but uh, had had a lot of those Mount Bethel guys that stepped up and just, I, I know a lot of you give all the time, but, you know, thank you so much. And I know we're in your prayers and, and, uh, and just as we've been praying for Mount Bethel and, and a lot of the issues that you guys are going through that we certainly appreciate, uh, appreciate your prayers and, and, and uh, support. So right now, our biggest issue that it's always frustrating, PayPal comes through eventually, you know, usually we can get it within a day or two or whatnot, but the GBGM, if you get through the Board of Global Ministries, they take, they don't take anything out. So they don't even, you know, your credit card, usually they charge you 2.8 or 2.5, whatever it is. So um, uh, they don't do any of that. You get 100% of it. So we kind of encourage people to give through that sometimes. But gee whiz, they can take a month or two before you find out who gave and what they gave, you know, so they're just a little slow on that, but we did meet our goal to answer your question. And, uh, we have not counted the GBGM money. So usually we have some amount that comes in, in with that, but I would say we probably surpassed it. Maybe, maybe $10,000. So it was all in all very successful and, and uh, I'm just still trying to find out how we can get grants from Coca-Cola. I know Pepsi's called us a couple of times. <laughs> I haven't talked to them yet. So uh, just just wanted to see what my friends at Coca-Cola would do. Your friends at Coca-Cola are letting people go and are reducing staff is what they're doing down there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, don't get me started on that one. That's they've. They were, they're cutting brands and cutting people, unfortunately. But oh my goodness, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Maybe sorry they could that. consider a home delivery. You know, when we lived in the Philippines, the uh, uh, what was it? Uh, I can't forget that San Miguel Brewery would deliver beer, cases of beer, and soda pop, and everything else to my house. Wow! In fact, it was for free by the case. So. Hey, Ed, you you were getting cases of beer every day. Is that what you were doing? Uh, not every day. <laughs> yeah, Tom, we have a regular Bolivia men's mission team breakfast at 7.30 in the morning. And it got a little chilly for us. So this is our second Zoom meeting. They tell me that happens with uh, age a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I was a little late getting with you guys. I had uh, took the dog out for a walk and she saw a couple of deer and off she went. Uh, Tom, when did you get back from Costa Rica? Or were you? I haven't been, I haven't been down since the spring. Okay. And, uh, Kathy just went back down. Kathy was. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. That's better. Okay. Kathy, um, mom and dad were in language school when she was born. And um, so she actually is a dual citizen. And um, so they'll let citizens in. But, and I've got a way I can do that if I'm related to her, you know. So I'm, I'm going to be working on that. But, uh, but it is, um, it's, it's, um, it's exciting what, the opportunities we're going to have there in, in Costa Rica to, to have training. And um, I don't mean to just step in and take over the conversation. Y'all got your devotion going on, but, but I'll just tell you real quick. Um, Mount Bethel is um, 
they they are being supportive of that project and and maybe more so today if if y'all will call Kerry and lean on him a little bit they've got some some additional funding that they're they're going to be voting on tonight I guess with the missions committee but they did they were very generous in or have promised to be very generous before the end of the year with with some support for the uh, um, buying the the ground, the facilities and whatnot. We've got a little less than five acres. I've talked to some of you guys about this. It's uh, we've, we've really been having trouble getting visas for people here in the United States. And that's not just insignificant people. These are college professors and people who own, own businesses. Uh, but there's just been this issue against Central America right now that it's almost impossible to get a visa. And these, some of these people have been here, you know, four or five times in the last five years, but still being denied visas. So we, we've known this since 9-11. It's becoming, it's become more and more difficult. So the solution to that is basically to take the training to them. So the, the property that we've been able to purchase for like one fifth of the, the value of it is uh, right next to a, a private national preserve that's uh, committed to be non-developed. You can, they can do trails on it, but they can't build anything on it. It's several hundred hectares. And then um, they have, you know, monkeys and macaws and parrots and sloths all right across this little stream from, from, um, from the new, the new property we have down there. So I'm looking forward to being able to get down there and put boots on the ground and maybe we can get some Mount Bethel men to go down and help us uh, further develop that. So uh, everything seems to be going good. We're doing training right now with, with Latin Americans, folks from Costa Rica and the Methodist church down there and uh, University of Honduras, University of Nicaragua and Costa Rica. So uh, we're, we're well on our way there. So thanks for, thanks for asking about that. Bert, are you still on that mission committee? No, no, I, I'm not on the committee. I hadn't been for, I don't know, maybe three years. Um, but uh, I'm still an advocate for CFAT. So I still <clears throat> try to promote, you know, CFAT. Um, I did talk to Carrie about our plans for next year as far as a, a Bolivia trip. And our, our thinking is um, probably best to try to schedule something for the fall of 21. Do you agree with that, Tom? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the, anybody's guess, but. Right. You know, I don't know. That's, our... that's where we're going to stick a date on the calendar. And um, um, we are uh, going to try to host a virtual mission trip. And Tom, you and I hadn't talked about this yet, but I'd like to, you know, review with you and maybe Uber to see if we can come up with a way to create a connection a virtual connection with us and and our friends down in um, Bolivia um, and a way to raise awareness and, and even re recruit for the trip and for the mission, you know. So we, we're thinking um, uh, April, maybe later in April after Easter. Okay. A couple of weeks. We'll Great. talk about that. Great. <clears throat> if, if they were to open Bolivia up, um, Costa Rica, I'm pretty happy with. They're, they've been the poster child. So I've got one sister in Costa Rica and the other one, and y'all know my little sister's in the Navy. Um, she gave my mom a heart attack. She was telling her that she was gonna be living in sin for the next year or two until all this passes over. Well, she's in Singapore and the call signs of that on your luggage bag is S-I-N. So she's living in sin <laughs> and um, both of those countries have been uh, poster, poster childs of, of um, how to do COVID right. And uh, uh, I think 
Singapore is almost non-existent at this point, the, the COVID virus. I mean, there's still some, but very, very managed, very controlled. Costa Rica shut its borders down. They had all their personal protection equipment, very, very well managed and maintained. And so when they do open up, I feel comfortable going there. But uh, Bolivia, as you know, is, is anybody's guess, but if they open up, it would give us Bert, it would give us a reason to maybe go down with a video camera or iPhone or whatever and and kind of walk the grounds and see the road and all those. I'd be open to doing that if if anyone, you know, wanted to it have to be small, maybe a couple of people and and uh, I could probably come up with a few, but if you're gonna be serving a little closer with the board, you may wanna uh, see if you can get a, a week off or nine or 10 days off and we could go down and, and host a tour. Yep, let's talk about that, yeah. Okay. But uh, I just got my, my uh, fall newsletter from CFAT, Tom, and um, I love all the stories, that, that all the different testimonies of people, you know, people that have served and people that have been served um, that it was a really, uh, really good newsletter. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> this has been an amazing year for all of us, I know. Uh, but uh, I never would have thought we would be able to do what we've done this year under the circumstances we've been in. And God, God's hand's really been showing itself in, in so many ways. Um, some of you know about, uh, <clears throat> you know, Ruth's brother, Johnny Mamani. He's now the chairman of the <clears throat> city council in Poquata, which is kind of the county seat over Quesimpuco and all of that area. And um, he called me up months ago and wanted to know, he says, we're really scared. We've got a lot of people coming in with COVID and we need um, ventilators. And I know Randolph County, my cousin works at the hospital and he runs the ventilator or the, whatever they call it, the breathing, the, um, you know, the people respiratory. have respiratory stuff. Respirator. And uh, we have one for the whole county. He says he might could get one out of the back dungeons, dun dungeons of the hospital and might could get it to work. But he says they're almost impossible to come by right now. And our Auburn Engineers Without Borders came up with these CPAP units that they're converting into ventilators. And we were able to get four of those down. And, uh, and so got them through customs, uh, Auburn University built them out for us. And then Auburn AUMC paid the shipping. We had some other incidentals we had to cover, but uh, they are in the hospital and we had a Zoom conference about two weeks ago, just uh, walking through this with the doctors, showing them how it worked and all of that so they are in place and functioning now who would have thought we would be able to see that would be able to to basically make to make that happen um so that that's exciting that again you know just god's hand at, at work with that so we had mentioned it in the newsletter but we've we've come a long way since then too so um yeah it's it's uh areas that we never thought we would go that we're able to to support and be part of that's great tom it was amazing to me i think your your cost in that newsletter for those cpap type ventilators was only what about seventeen hundred dollars or something just amazing yeah it was it was a little more than that that was our initial thing on it because they used mm -hmm. two cpaps because of the elevation, the altitude, but it wasn't much ah. more than that. Um, it gives you a little more pressure and apparently they needed that. Yeah. But um, 
Ed was asking me to share a little more about Bolivia, and I will, while we're talking about breathing, that is a, uh, it's, it's underrated sometimes. Breathing's good. Minho and Uber went down. Whoop. Oh, I guess it was a week, week and a half ago. Too. Can I have some food go? And, uh, Tom, we lost your mic again. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay. We lost your mic. All right, Mike, what are you doing to me? Um, <laughs> let's see here. Oh, you're still off. I can just barely hear you. Now I can't hear you at all. <clears throat> Well, we know what to get Tom for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they had all these stockpiles of ventilators now, but I guess they're not releasing any of them because of the increase in COVID here in the United States, huh? I guess not. We're releasing them and then shipping them to Bolivia. But I know there is a there is a mission committee meeting tonight because I've been invited to observe because I go on that committee in January. So I was telling you about Benho and Uber going in. They um, they got two kits in Buco and Benho got um, a, had a fever and he was having shortness of breath, which does not sound good, of course. They spent the night and he got out first thing in the morning and uh, went to Pocuata. He got oxygen that day. They were able to get him to La Paz without too much uncomfort. And uh, he's been in the hospital until about two days ago. So the good news, it was not COVID, it was pneumonia. So, uh, yeah, Ikuti is the, just update on, on that. They, they've really done a good job of uh, managing their water system. That's the latest one that's just down the hill from Kesenfuko. There are two of those down the hill. This is the lowest one. And uh, I, I think they have 30 something farms that have water now. And, and it is, um, they're doing just phenomenal. Everybody is just so jazzed about um, Benho calls it the, the green poncho, you know, the uh, vegetables and, you know, all cover crops, all that growing. And then the, um, the uh, ventilators and then getting the road in where we can access uh, Paradilla, which is the next project that the engineers without borders want to take on and they're kind of like you guys. Let's shoot for the fall and we'll see what happens. You know, it's, um, if, if things open up, if they get worse, then we'll, we'll, you know, we can always postpone, but hopefully it's, it's going to get better. And with this vaccine, I'm counting on it. We all are. What has COVID done to Case and Fuko? How how bad or good? Or what is, what's their situation like there? We had about you know if y'all remember back when it first started in the spring, we had about eighty folks that had left and gone down to Peru and I can't remember Chile somewhere else. And and when they started closing the borders, they all came sneaking across the border and came into Case and Fuko and. Ruth Naomi was, I think she was about seven or eight months pregnant at the time, and and it was a scary time for for them. But it's all good, and uh, and they only had a couple of cases, and then uh, and then uh, right now in Pocuata, where the ventilators are, they have. I think they had 25 the last the last day I talked to them last week they had 25 cases the next day they had 85 cases Whoa. so it was it was going up and those 
those uh, ventilators were making a difference. Okay. Um, okay, so that was UPS delivery. And uh, of course, they want you to see their document of getting it through, getting it through customs. Um, that's the customs warehouse. And this is the government bringing their truck up to get them released from customs and and uh, that's what one of those units looks like. The reinvent. Can you see that? So they took a they took a CPAP machine or two and made that? Yes, sir. So they got basically you've got two CPAP machines that are in line and according to Dr. Birch, uh, he says it's about a thousand dollars more to the other parts that go into it that, that uh, I guess got you up to the 17, 1700. And I, I can't remember if that included the extra CPAP or not, right. but, but Auburn, Auburn Engineers Without Borders or the university uh, donated those. So I'm not, I didn't see an invoice or anything on those. And, and we appreciate, we appreciate that. And Mike, you're going to have to give me a little bit of a war eagle on that for. No, nope. <laughs> you and I, you and I will only differ when it comes to football. Otherwise I, I, Auburn's good. I have no problem with them. Okay. Can you share pictures of that? Because Jeanette's company works with CPAPs, CPAPs, and I would like to share that with her. Sure, sure. Um, okay, so um, select to turn on nearby sharing. That's Bluetooth. That's not what we want. I can send them to you. But just email, email me some mom. You don't have to do it right now. Okay. All righty. I'll do that. And uh, so all righty. And let me see if I can get um Does that look familiar? That's the top of the mountain before you go in to your right, you go down the hill there to Kesson Puko. And uh, that's the road they just cut to bring you in. If you see the horizon over on your right hand side, if you get to the edge of that cliff and you look down, you're looking down at the, the hospital and our dormitory and all of that stuff. If that gives your bearings of, of where you are. Um, so the hospital is is actually on the other side of that mountain down in that valley. There's Cassi Meadle. Again, over to your rights where where we live. <clears throat> and so they walk down, that's the little white building you can see from the hospital across the valley for Paradilla. It was the old schoolhouse. We walked by that when we were building the clinic, didn't we? Um, where we had that hailstorm, didn't we go by the the facility there? 
I, I wasn't on that trip, but we did walk by that facility um, when we built the, uh, we visited the, the little town there when we built the first cistern um, uh, up above uh, Ben Ho's Million Star Hotel. Right, yeah. Okay, this is the one going down to Iputi. Um, the, uh, one of the last things that I remember distinctly about Isaac, uh, if you see in the background there, there's a little trail. Um, that's where the, this water line is, is going around that trail. And they had uh, carved it out a little more and, and used dynamite to, to blast into the mountain some. And, and, and uh, if y'all remember, Isaac has been looking at Facebook and he sees the building science guys with all their orange safety vest and, and hard hats. So he felt like he needed those down in, in uh, Kesifuco. And he was almost insisting we wear them. And I just told him I'm not gonna wear one, not a hard hat anyway, you know, there's nothing out here that would fall on my head from that elevation and so I went around the corner there and they were blasting that out with dynamite and I had my drone flying on the other side of it so I could get a direct shot of it and when it exploded there was about a football sized rock that came flying over and I saw it coming at me and, and literally I had to step aside to, to miss getting whacked by it and uh, the only thought that crossed my head was, you know, what if I'd been hit by it? Not the fact that I was dead or in a concussion or whatever, but the fact that Isaac would come over and say, ha, see, I told you, you need to wear a hard hat. <laughs> so, <laughs> Y'all know Isaac, he would have been, he would have been pushing that, that one on, but um, let me see if we got, uh, these are some of the, this is a, what do you call it, a pressure breaker, you know, that there's a word for it, but it basically reduced pressure, pressure reducer. And here's some of the crops. Wow. So this is from like two weeks ago. That's uh sprinkle the sprinkler that's good pressure yeah i've got i've got a good picture that <clears throat> one of the professors made me promise not to show but uh he was being a little arrogant and we had the three inch pipe that went down to a two down to one and a half inch. <clears throat> he thought he could hold uh, the plug on the end of it and uh, manually without gluing it. We had some other things we were going to do and and uh, I said if I'm not advising you to do that but if you're going to do something like that I'm going to get my camera out and I got some pretty good pictures of him getting blasted by however much PCI of water that was that came through. And he made me promise not to show it. So <laughs> publicly, I, I may, if I get you down to Kesenpuka, I may show it to you. <laughs> um, but uh, let's see. I'm, I'm looking at these for the first time as you guys are. This is uh, our holding tank, which you guys are familiar with. And there's Alfio. And uh, 
Okay, <clears throat> this I didn't recognize, but um, we've been able to sponsor a project in the jungle down where I grew up. There's Ben Ho. And uh, this is a chicken project, so a poultry project that that hopefully is going to generate enough revenue to keep Uber supported as the director there financially. These were all cut with a chainsaw, by the way. Mm. And uh, there's some of the rice brand that, that will be feeding the chickens. Notice the hat he's wearing there. <clears throat> anyway, the, uh, the idea is that the chickens will, um, will, you sell those to the open market and then they take the byproducts, uh, the waste, the, you know, the feet, the head, the intestines, and they feed them to this type of fish called, uh, there's a couple of names for it. The local name is Paichi. Any of you that watch River Mon Monsters and see, uh, what is it, Jeremy Wade? They had these, uh, they're about eight or 10 feet long fish. They'll have like four or five people holding them up. Well, that's become the new delicacy in a lot of the gourmet restaurants. It's a, a mild white fish, but it's huge. And they're becoming a little bit rare because of the the demand for them, but they grow very fast. And uh, so Ben Ho's raised tilapia before he's raised paku. And the idea here is using the chicken waste to feed these fish and, and they have a, a very high resale value. Um, so that's one of the projects that, that we've got CFAT sponsors that have, have uh, gotten behind and are supporting. So you'll hear, hear and see a little more of that. Well, we, we should have a prayer now while we have the time. Okay, okay. let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask uh, for your support of our Bolivian uh, brothers and sisters and your help and guidance to help us find the right way to help others protect uh, CFAT, our families and friends, and help further develop Tom's CFAT organization, all the good work that they do. Help us during this time of uh, pestilence, and, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ed. Mm -hmm. Tom, we know you're an hour hour uh, earlier than us so we really appreciate you you uh, getting up extra early for us yeah sorry i was i was a little late uh that was i told you the dog and deer fault but it also means there was about an eight point buck down there if i got any uh hunters over there uh you're welcome to come over and we've got some got some uh properties you can you can uh test your bow strength or your rifle strength or whatever on that. You're welcome to come over anytime. That's great. Tom, it was good hearing from you. Uh, I gotta, gotta get on out the door here. So gentlemen, I will be talking to you later. Good, yeah. good seeing you, Tom. Good seeing you, Joey. Thanks for- I know you like all my conversation I gave you in there. So I was listening, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. All right. Good seeing y'all. See ya. Okay. Thank you. Have thank, a good day, Joey. Thank you, Joey. Thank everyone. And thank you, Tom. Uh, you really are a trooper for coming up this early. Oh, it's no no problem. You guys get me up earlier than that in, uh, in Bolivia every morning. <laughs> uh, hearing, hearing Mike snoring over in the corner.